Sometimes in life, we are confronted with the harsh reality of our own mortality. We are reminded that our time on this earth is limited and that we must cherish the moments we have with those we love. Puss in Boots, The Last Wish is a beautiful and heart-wrenching exploration of these themes. Through the eyes of a beloved character, we experience the depths of sadness and the enduring power of hope. I know I can never defeat you, Lobo, but I will never stop fighting for this life. Join us on this emotional journey as we witness the bravery, the passion, and the love that make life worth living. One life spent with you is all that I could wish for. Experience the beauty and the pain of the human experience as we delve into the emotional depths of this animated masterpiece. I am on my last life. I need to get my lives back. Without them, I am not... I, I am not... Let us join together as we honour the legacy of this beloved character and discover the true meaning of the last wish. So if you're scared of death, the way to overcome it is to face it. Let's see how that happens in Puss in Boots, the newest movie. Oh my gosh. There's a sword. Oh. It's blood. Yeah, facing his mortality. Oh, his hair standing on end. Mm -hmm. He's never experienced that before. Mm. I just laugh. The smell of fear. What's the matter? Lives flashing before your eyes? Pick it up. Pick it up. <laughs> Flight response. Natural response to fear, run away. Especially when there's a giant, scary, bounty hunter death dog after you. <laughs> Which is a new thing for Puss in Boots. He's never been this terrified in his life, but mm. he's finally realized that he's not immortal and that this could really be his end. And so understandably, he's terrified having this big scary wolf coming after him. And a natural response is to run. Like he froze first mm. and then to run. Mm. He's had it pointed out to him by the doctor that he's at the end of his nine lives on his last one and he, he's brushed it off but now that he's really confronted with it that fear of death has come on and we can see those those responses you know he's got his his, his eyes have expanded his mm. ears are back his his hair's on end just like you would expect a cat to respond when it's terrified yes and we get similar stuff ourselves it's all to enhance our sensory perception so that we can we can fight it off and run away better spot that threat better as well. And I guess their fur on end is to make the cat look bigger. Yes. So that it's more threatening to the thing it's scared of. Oh, that whistle was terrifying. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is not a kid's movie. This is mm. not a kid's movie. It's like the Velociraptor in Jurassic Park. Yeah. Corre, corre, gatito. Oh. It's really hunting him. Mm. It's after mm. him, and he's, mm. it's very much that predator prey mm. dynamic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so he's he's taken the the one out that he could see go into the into the toilet out the sewage system, um, but he's also feeling really ashamed of that. Yeah, definitely from being the greatest hero, um, fearless hero, to mm. being terrified and petrified mm. and mm. crawling out of a sewer to escape. Mm. It must be a big blow to his ego. I am no longer worthy. I'm sorry. Even the sky is crying. We are gathered here today to say goodbye to Pussy Moots. Who is your favorite fearless hero? Who is your favorite fearless hero? You were, you were. <laughs> oh, there's a real grief there mm. of the loss of who he was and mm. who he saw himself mm. as. Um, mm. And as he goes into hiding as well, um, so he's he's avoiding avoiding that fear of death, um, and has decided to 
to take refuge with the, the cat lady. And that's a real thing that can happen when we mm. get so terrified that we withdraw from life. Mm. There can be this real grief of who I was. And, and not mm. just for you, but also I remember myself having people going, I want the old Becky back. <laughs> and knowing that, that that part of you has died mm. and isn't there anymore and that the fear has taken over, mm. it is, is pretty distressing. Mm, it can lead to getting depressed. This is the it does not look like the usual pushing boots. <laughs> I mean, meow, whatever. Well, what do you want? I want to be left alone. Mm. Wow. <laughs> the contrast. <laughs> yeah. Contrast between mm. him and the dog, but mm. man, he is, he's given up. Yeah. He's just... He's just eating, sleeping, and existing, but not living anymore. Mm, mm. Yeah, he's really down in the dumps there. The depression set in, um, and um, yeah, he, he's, he just wants to be left alone, doesn't want anything, doesn't feel any enjoyment anymore, and that comes with depressed mood um, as we just wind down, hibernate, wait for the threat to blow over, but in this case, the, the threat is dying, so <laughs> you can see how that doesn't really... Uh, blow over so it'll continue on at this rate and one of the interesting things here is that mm. he is terrified of dying mm. but because he's scared of dying he's not living mm. and so you're in this no man's land mm. of you're not really dead but you're not really alive either mm. Mm. and that's where he's found himself because of that fear and fear can do that you know mm. fear of something mm. can make us avoid living and mm. actually enjoying our lives mm. in the anticipation of that terrible thing happening mm. but actually that it can be a bigger cost to us not at going out there and actually doing the thing that, mm. that might have a negative consequence but it actually involves living our lives mm. and then he, he gains some hope which brings him out of the depressed mood but still up in the anxiety because he hears about this chance of getting this wish um, yeah. and getting his nine lives back um, but there's still there's still that fear Yeah, good, good representation of scary. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, I don't like the whistle. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm it's it's really well done. I don't like the whistle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's scary. Um, and that, but it, it gives you that feeling of of fear, and you and you see it in his eyes and and the body language, um, where he's he's feeling that that fear deaths after him. But mm. you're not getting him explaining that to the people around him. He's not saying, mm. "I've seen death, run away." Mm. He's just he's just kind of putting an urgency like we need to go faster we need to we need to get out of here and mm. that's interesting because i think that happens with people who have anxiety is mm. they they can get aggressive and and mm. really urgent about mm. something mm -hmm. um because, and there's there's a basis in fear but it can it can be hard for people around them mm. to understand that mm. absolutely Looks like a spell behind him. Light response. And he's just, he's seeing death in everything. Mm. And you can see the effect that it has on like our vision and and uh, and the feel of, of everything around us. It's, it's possibly even depicting a bit of dissociation there, um, but certainly, yeah, you've got the ears back, the panting, the heart rate, all of that going um, as, as he gears right up into panic. Mm. Yeah, he's pretty damn distressed there. And he's mm. running away from the thing that he wants as well. Mm. And that's what fear often does, is it mm. makes us turn in the opposite direction of our goals mm. um, because mm. we're just so scared of that negative thing happening. Mm. Here, you. I do love the smell of fear. It's intoxicating. You are no body hunter. You are death. And I don't mean it metaphorically or rhetorically or poetically or theoretically or in any other fancy way. I'm death. Straight up. 
<laughs> and we have that intense flight response. You can see him taking joy in the chase mm. and in making him afraid. Mm. And here his, his friends have arrived. He's just in full on flight. And like you said, they don't understand because he hasn't explained. And they feel betrayed by mm. him. But in his face, you can see that he, he doesn't want to mm. disappoint them, but he's so mm. scared he can't stop. Mm. And, yeah. and that's really hard. It is. It is. And it, it creates that, that rift in those friendships. Mm. Yeah. It's the, He's just so scared he can't be the person he wants to be. And mm. I think a lot of people with anxiety can relate to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and often it feels like the people around us don't really understand. They, they don't get the anxiety. Um, and sometimes that can be having trouble articulating it ourselves, mm. um, understanding it fully ourselves. Um, and, and also it, it can, be, um, can be a bit of a difficulty of, of fully grasping that. Um, uh, other people getting that. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly having a panic attack. Yeah. Yeah. Can't focus. Yeah. Doesn't he's feel like he can breathe. Hand on his heart, so he's probably noticing that that feels pretty weird and intense. <laughs> therapy dog. Good <laughs> therapy dog. Oh, pets are amazing. He's soft there he goes. Fur. He's focusing on that. Mm. Breathing. It's easing. Yeah. Which panic does? It peaks uh -huh. and comes back down again. Yeah. Thank you, Berito. What's going on with you, Puss? I... I am down to my last life. And uh, I... I am afraid. But he's opened up there. Yes. Which is mm. so big to finally mm. open up to mm. the people around you so mm. that they know what's going on mm. because they, they're not mind readers. They don't know what's happening, but mm. there he's able to explain to him mm. that the situations he's in and why he's so terrified, which mm. is it's really great that he did that because I think that's so important mm. to do that. Mm. But you're still mm. running. Still the same old pussy boots. But I am not. I am not pussy boots. I'm... I am on my last life. I need to get my lives back. Without them, I am not... I, I am not... What? The legend? <laughs> I still can't compete with your one true love. Go on. Get your lives back. <gasps> Just keep them out of mine. You see that desperation grabbing the, the map? Mm. Mm. That, it feels like that ticket out of his fear. If he mm. can just get those extra mm. lives, then, mm. then everything will be back to how it used to be and he can be the brave hero again mm. because he doesn't need to be afraid of death mm. because he's got all these extra lives again. Mm -hmm. But you also see that sense of regret cross across his face as well um, as he sees her walk away. Mm. Mm. Especially because she, she doesn't care so much about the hero, she cares about him mm. and he's hanging on to that and loving mm. that more than caring about his friends. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, when he was trying to explain I'm not, not like, I don't know if he was trying to say I'm not that hero in that situation or whether he was saying like, I'm not feeling okay or like, uh, like trying to explain how terrified he's feeling and that he wants to, um, wants to sort that, wants to fix that, get back to being able to actually enjoy life, feel stable. Yeah, he mm. is finding it really hard to communicate mm. what's going on because I don't mm. think he really quite knows what's going on. It's no, a big what's... shock to him. He has experience. Yeah, it's a first it. time for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that can happen, especially with panic for people, where it just comes on at a certain point in their lives, um, and and then it's like, whoa, what is this? Um, and uh, yeah, and it's not until um, someone points out, maybe a doctor, maybe someone else, or, or sometimes people look it up online, and it's like, ah, oh, this could be this could be panic. Um, this could be a panic attack um, and then it's like oh okay and then being able to work through that and articulate better what's happening it's like oh yeah that 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 those are all things that are happening to me 
Mm. And if you are relating at all to what is going on with Puss and Boots, if you've experienced anything like this, that sort of panic, that intense fear, mm. we actually have something for you that um, can really help you through that. Mm. Um, we have a video. Yes, so if you want to find out more about our cutting edge psychological approach to be able to work through that, um, then um, we've got an awesome case study video for you. You can find that down in the description below. Exactly, so check that out and get the help you need to get better. He's here for me. I've enjoyed the chase, Gato. But I think we've reached the end now, you and I. You're gonna take the coward's way out? Run away to more lives? Or you're gonna fight? Pick it up. Go on, pick it up. Mm. Oh. Yeah, you can see that fear as he looks down, looks up, looks down, looks up. Um, do, I, do I take the wish or what do I do? Or do I face this? Mm. Do I actually do something about it? Mm. You can see that adrenaline away. flying around. Like the, yeah. the indecision there. Mm. It's, mm. it's a big choice to make. Yeah. Analysis paralysis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. to make. Mm. Well, it's okay to be afraid. No, not for pussy mood. I, I'm supposed to be a fearless hero, a legend, but without lives to spare, I am nothing. I need that wish to get my lives back. I need to be a fearless hero. Um, he sees himself as having to be utterly fearless, um, which is a <laughs> it's a pretty pretty high standard. Um, uh, like we actually need fear, for example, to um, be brave, mm. right? You're not being brave if you just expect everything to be fine <laughs> you you're brave when you see what could go wrong and yet you you fight anyway i think as we've talked about in the video brave there's a difference between brave and reckless mm -hmm. and he was very reckless as a hero <laughs> in that he threw away his li eight lives eight of his lives on his like not very <laughs> What if you were the one just random? No, I don't need a spotter. <laughs> you know, random things that he could have very easily avoided mm. um, if he'd been a bit smarter about it, but he was just, he was casual about mm. throwing those lives away mm. rather than being intentional about going towards the things that he does want and really living, living life purposefully. About that day, Puss in Boots is not supposed to be afraid. But outside that church in Santa Coloma, that was the first time I ever felt fear. So I ran. It, it was a mistake, Kitty. He's, he's communicating, he's explaining. And it's really good that he's owning, doing some ownership as well. Mm. He explained what happened, you know, I was, mm. I was afraid for the, and for the first time. And so it's interesting to see that was the first time he experienced mm. fear. Mm. It was that fear of commitment. <laughs> <laughs> and then later it's this fear of death. Mm. But that he's owning it and he's saying it was a mistake. Um, I think it's really beautiful that he's actually doing that and standing mm. up for that. And that's, it's healing, you know. We make mistakes when we're really scared. Sometimes we do things that we wouldn't want to do. Mm. And it's great to be able to turn this back to the people who we care about and, and say, I made a mistake mm. and I'm sorry. Mm. Never compete with your one true love. Who? Yourself. The <laughs> legend. Oh. I wasn't going to show up for that guy. But... You don't seem like that guy anymore. You don't seem like that guy anymore. So he's, he's changing, he's growing. Mm. I bet he would take that as he's not as courageous and <laughs> stuff anymore. Like, I, I'd be yeah. interested to see whether he took that as he's improving positively. But she is being really lovely and flirty about it. And mm, hopefully mm. that comes across. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you see different emotions flitting across his face there. Mm. I don't think he's taking it all negatively. Oh, that's good. Mm. I think sometimes it's easier to do that. <laughs> mm. oh. They are working together. <laughs> I love that. Oh. <laughs> yeah. More. That 
beautiful connection mm. between the two of them. Yeah, as that grows and develops. Mm. Mm. Really lovely. Because mm. she's never had anyone she could trust. And yeah. so that building that trust together. And trust yeah. is something we build. Mm. Um, and it's it has all sorts of components. And it, it develops over time. And so, especially if we've had trust broken before, mm. it can take it a little bit longer to do. So mm. it's really cool to see them rebuilding trust, actually, mm. really. That he realizes he wants What's to fight for. Lives flashing before your eyes. No. Just one. Yeah. I'm down running. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fear me if you dare. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Yeah, fight, fight, fight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he's gonna he's gonna fight for for this one life now. But what he was seeing flashing before his eyes were, were those relationships, and and those connections are what makes life meaningful. So this life is now meaningful because he's mm. he's had. Um, uh, he noticed when he was with all of his uh, past lives in that um, that glittery cave that um, that actually he was quite lonely. Uh, there was no room for other people um, in his in while he was being the legend. Um, and here he's got those connections. It's meaningful, and he he wants that. He wants to fight for that. Mm, yeah, he wants to engage in this life. Yes, he wants to live this life and not just run from his sphere of death mm. and and miss the opportunity to engage with what he has right in front of him. And it's so great that he realizes that mm. he realizes what is valuable to him, mm. and then he goes for it. He's like, mm. right, I'm gonna. I'm going to go head on towards mm -hmm. the thing I'm afraid of because I know that if I don't, then it's going to stop me from being able to do things that are meaningful. <laughs> Table's turned. Well, pick it up. <sighs> I know I can never defeat you, Lobo, but I will never stop fighting for this life. Yeah. <laughs> oh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> So he's out of avoidance, um, and uh, and he's going for it. He's um, mm. he's facing his fears, and uh, let's see what happens. And especially with the fear of death, there mm. there is nothing you can do about that. That you know, death happens to all of us, mm -hmm. and but it, to continue fighting for this life, and it's funny because as growing up and. I often had this feeling like I was supposed to give my life for other people and like if there was ever a situation where someone was pointing a gun at someone that I should throw myself in front of it and and just lay down my life and it wasn't really until I had kids that I realized how important it is for me to actually live for people to especially because I have been suicidal in the past um, to to hold on to this life and fight for this life how important that is to those who really care about us and that like we've said what makes life meaningful something like i shouldn't have played with my damn friend i came here for an arrogant little legend who thought he was immortal but I don't see him anymore. He's grown! <laughs> <laughs> Live your life, Pussy Moods. Live it well. You know we will meet again, right? Si, sí. hasta la muerte. <laughs> now that's really interesting because that is actually the progression that people grow through when they're overcoming fear of death mm. okay right we do realize that death will happen later but that's the thing the later right mm. so our amygdala our midbrain it, it doesn't understand time time is an abstract concept right so what happens when we get fear of death is not that we fear death more than other people uh, generally <laughs> we fear death natural instinct and all that mm. but what's happened is a mistake to think that it's going to happen now it's going to happen like mm. today right and you won't logically think that but that'll be what's happening in the unconscious mm. right i'm going to die real soon um and because of that not being able to understand time with the midbrain it's basically thinking today like maybe at a stretch tomorrow but like very very soon but when when you go through 
uh, you go through therapy, you go through exposure, that kind of thing, and it stretches out and the midbrain's able to get, ah, oh, it's not happening today or tomorrow or, or soon, it's concept of, vague concept of time, right? Then it's like, oh, okay, and the anxiety, whew, that clears, right? Because as long as it's way later, you're not going to get that now fear response, adrenaline, panic, etc. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. That it's about pushing it out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you said death was after you, I thought you were just being melodramatic. <laughs> the wish is yours. You deserve someone you can trust. I don't need it. I've got what I wished for. No magic required. He looks so vulnerable. It's great. Oh, look at that smile. <laughs> Such a genuine smile mm. of like he's so pleased that he can be that person mm. that she trusts. Mm. 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 I think he's just as proud of that as being the legend. Or more so. <laughs> mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Hey! Tear the wish. Oh, that's a big turnaround. <laughs> from all of them fighting for things that they now realize they already have. Mm, they already yep, have yep. family. And all three of them realize that. Yep. And they have a life worth living yep. right now. They mm -hmm. don't need a whole lot of extras. Mm. Um, well, but yeah. also the, an, an aspect of that is that he's good enough, mm. right? Like, oh, I need the nine lives so that I can be, I can be the best, I can be good enough, I can be that hero. Um, but realizing that actually with these connections, he's he's good enough to these people that he cares about, mm. Mm. and to I himself. Thought about it like that, but that's so true. Mm. So much of our issues is Stem about from that. well, <laughs> yeah. well, it's the worthiness piece, but there's mm. about what it, what the meaning we're making mm. it mm. about ourselves, mm. and what that says about us, and yeah, mm. that he's not worthy of them. Kitty, one life spent with you is all that I could wish for. <laughs> that's so lovely <laughs> they know that feeling mm. that's really beautiful yeah really showing them coming together and that connection where are we headed anyways off to find new adventures and to see some old friends oh let's go yeah so they're off on on this adventure of life they're continuing that on he's uh he's got that uh, sense of worth but also that connection life feels meaningful and so off they go um, into that that adventure of life um, mm -hmm. and he's obviously feeling a lot better he's overcome the depression yeah. he's overcome the anxiety yeah and he's actually being courageous and living mm. his life to the full mm. with people he cares about and actually some of the biggest courage is engaging with people mm. who are mean for us. So mm. often we can run from important relationships and people mm. who care about us mm. because of fear of not being good enough and mm. fear of losing them. Mm. Or So the fact that he's engaging with the relationships mm. as well as the adventure is what makes this such a beautiful conclusion and uh, such a lovely example of growth mm. in a character. Mm. And if you want to see more of these, then please subscribe. Yeah. And if you are after um, our cutting edge process to be able to overcome your own anxiety, then again, that link is down below in the description. Yeah, we'd love to help you. Thanks again. Bye.